Hey friends, Ash here with Jensen's. Hopefully you guys are doing well today. So I'm sure all of you out there have got fragrances that when you wear them, kind of make you feel better. You know, boost your confidence a little bit. Have you walking a little bit taller that day? It doesn't matter what the fragrance is. You know, it could be uh, Axe Phoenix. It could be Liz Claiborne Curve or it could be a really expensive top of the line niche fragrance or indie fragrance. It doesn't really matter as long as it boosts your confidence. And today I'm gonna to be sharing with you guys 10 fragrances that do that for me. So let's go ahead and crack into it. Let's check these out. I can't think of a better way to start this off than a fragrance that modernizes and brings that 80s flavor that I love so much into the current day and time, Sauvage Elixir. The biggest drawback for this one is gonna be the price. It ain't cheap. Dior is gonna really ring out your pockets. You know, they're gonna rifle through your bags, rifle through your wallet and take all your money. But in return, you get this nice little 60 mil size bottle. Yay. Cinnamon, lavender, sandalwood, and nutmeg, some of the notes in this bad boy. And it really does throw me back. You know, it reminds me of smelling those fragrances that my dad wore back in the day, for better or for worse. Well, actually, definitely for better, because I love the way this smells. Performance is really kicking here. Last a long time, projects heavily. People are gonna be able to pick it up very easily. And if you spray too much of it, they're gonna pick it up a little bit too much and they're gonna pass out. Sauvage Elixir Overdose. It's a thing, it's a problem. It's warm, rich, woodsy, spicy, and uh, that throwback feel to it really just appeals to me on so many different levels. It's like nostalgic and yet at the same time, very classy. Sauvage Elixir is awesome stuff. I love this. Now something completely different from Paco Rabanne, Pure Excess Night. Also really love Pure Excess. That one's a jam also. Now this one is very sweet. So it's not got as much of that gentlemanly sort of vibe to it. When you look at that note breakdown though, you know what you're in for. You know you're in for that sweetness. It's got cacao, it's got vanilla, it's got ginseng. Yeah, that's, that's kind of a random note, but it also has caramel, it has myrrh, it's got ginger. It smells awesome. Performance again, very, very good. And this one is one that grew on me a bunch over time. I liked it originally, you know, thought it was real good, real nice, but as I wore it more, I enjoyed it more. Now we gotta tackle just the most generic, obvious stuff ever for me, Aqua de Jo Profundo. It's almost a cop-out answer to put an Aqua de Jo in this list because Aqua de Jo, the original, is probably the fragrance that I've worn the most over the course of my entire life. And this still has that Aqua de Jo DNA and it's like ingrained into me, deep within my subcortex, that Aqua de Jo equals awesome. It's like you just keep going back to the well, you know? It's like Pavlov's dog. I wore Aqua de Joe so much when I was younger and I got so much attention wearing it that it just became this cause and effect type thing. Spray on Aqua de Joe, people think you smell awesome. Confidence goes up. Spray on Aqua de Joe, people think you smell awesome. Confidence goes up. Aqua de Joe Profundo has that original Aqua de Joe DNA in there. You can pick it up immediately when you smell this, you know, oh, that's an Aqua de Joe. Modernized, given a little green twist. It's got rosemary in there. It's got cypress in there. Of course, sea notes and citrus. I think it smells great. And it scratches my Aqua de Joe itch, you know, wanting to, to relive the glory days, I guess you could say. That's what this one does for me. And uh, it does it without maybe, you know, that, that feeling of, oh, I'm wearing something dated. Really nice, love it. Back to the cooler months we go with Nuit DC Noir Argent from Isimiyake. Now I've harped on this a lot. I'll keep harping on it until the end of time. I'll be a harpy, I'll be a siren calling you to your death on the open seas, telling you, yo, Isimiyake, they're cool weather fragrances slap. They're really good. So yeah, you might get annoyed by it, me just sitting there like, hey, they're actually really good, check them out. But until they start sucking, I'm gonna keep saying that they're really good and you need to know about them. Myrrh, leather, olibanum, and saffron. Some of the notes in this fragrance, it is rich, it's deep. It smells much more expensive than what you're gonna pay for it, assuming you pick it up at discounters. But let's be real, if you're in the United States and you're buying Isimiyake cool weather fragrances, I'd say you're buying them from discounters anyway. Wonderful spices, resins, and that leather in here. It is an amazing scent, great quality. Now a little Cavalli, little Deep Desire. Yeah, Cavalli Womo Deep Desire. This is something that I think completely sucks. Cavalli's Womo line, really good. And the price point from discounters typically, even better. And yet I guess in terms of 
actual retail sales, Cavalli's Womo line, uh, not so good. And it's a bummer because Deep Desire, La Note, and Silver Essence are amazing fragrances, especially when you can find them from discounters in that $40 or less range. Even going up to like 60, it's still worth it. This one has cinnamon, saffron, cedar, and cashmere as some of the notes in the fragrance. It is a top notch, warm, sexy, ambery, sweet fragrance for cool weather. Works during the day, but perfect during a night out. Deep Desire, some really nice stuff in the bottle. Really classy too. Obvious one, Spice Bomb Extreme, Victor and Rolf. Vanilla, tobacco, spices, some of the notes in the fragrance. Said it before, say it again. Spice Bomb Extreme, an improvement over the original Spice Bomb. Now, I'm gonna give props to the original Spice Bomb for when it came out, what it did, and still smelling as good today as when it came out, it gets top marks. But if I could pick just one, I'm gonna take this one. Performance, amazing. It's gonna last forever, it's gonna project heavily. People are easily gonna pick it up, and when they do, they're gonna love it. The vanilla in here really is what takes it over the edge for me, that black vanilla, smoothing things out, giving it that extra sweetness. And you know with a name like Spice Bomb, ton of spices in there as well. Now I'm gonna hit you with two fragrances from the same house, they are both cheap. And it's a house that frankly, I think needs to come out with some new stuff. They've been lacking, they've been slacking, they've been doing nothing. It's been years since their last fragrance. What's the deal? First up, Radiant Bergamot from Ferrari. Ferrari cars, very expensive. Ferrari fragrances, mad cheap, but with good quality. Bergamot, ginger, rosemary, lemon, and moss, some of the notes in the fragrance. This smells similar to Aqua de Parma's Colonia only way, way, way cheaper. The presentation is nice, classy, simple, modern, nice heavy metal cap with a, a leather wrap. It's good stuff. Very fresh, very clean, with kind of a classically masculine feel to it. So it has this, this maturity to it, this gentlemanly vibe, but without coming across stuffy. Ferrari, where are you at? Come on guys, hit me up. You know, I'll, I'll help you guys come up with some, some new fragrances. And in, in return, all I want is a Ferrari. It's a good trade, it's a good deal. So after Radiant Bergamot, like I said, another Ferrari, pure lavender. Now, to be completely clear here, pure lavender does not get as much love as Radiant Bergamot from most people, but I think pure lavender smells awesome. I am a fan of lavender though. I, I think that's a prerequisite, you have to like it cashmere, vanilla, citrus, and sage, some of the other notes going along with that lavender. And the lavender here is, is more like a zingy, fresh lavender. It's got a, a bit of sweetness to it, but it's not the same type of lavender that you're gonna find in a lot of like mint blue fragrances. It's got this modern, fuzzy, almost effervescence to it here. I really enjoy it for just a clean, fresh, semi-sweet type of uh, springtime and summertime scent. Great office kind of fragrance, uh, white t-shirt, white button up kind of fragrance, and the price is very low. Now one of the fragrances I've been wearing this spring, Gentleman Eau de Toilette Intense. This one makes prominent use of iris, which is a note that I love, and I make no apologies for it. The iris here isn't full on powdery soapy like you're gonna find in the Prada Loam line or frankly, a lot of Prada fragrances. And it's also not all the way over toward that creamy lipstick makeup style of iris that you're gonna find in Gentleman Eau de Parfum or Dior Homme Intense or Valentino Womo Intense. Instead, it's somewhere in the middle. So it's fresher, but not full on powdery. And it has some density, but not full on lipstick. There's also Cypress, Tonka, and Cardamom in here. And what this does for the Gentleman line is basically the same thing that Dior Homme O did for the Dior Homme line before it was taken out back and uh, put down by Dior. Thanks for that, Christian Dior. I actually really like Dior Homme O but it takes that iris and softens it up a little bit, you know, it lightens it up a little bit without taking away the entirety of the character of the iris and makes it great for springtime use, just like Dior Homme O did for the Dior Homme line. Now this doesn't smell exactly like Dior Homme O, so it's not really a replacement for it in the sense that, you know, it smells the same as Dior Homme O, but it does give you a designer iris fragrance that's very nice quality that you would use in the same times and same situations as Dior Homme O. And uh, overall, it smells really, really good. So yeah. We have made it to the final fragrance, the grand finale. What could it be? It's Tom Ford's Noir Extreme. 
This still smells just as good today as the first time that I ever smelled it. It is a killer fragrance. And the price is also killer on your bank account. So there's that. Good old Tom Ford coming at you with the quality and the price tag. It's got vanilla, amber woods, cardamom, and kofi. And I think that there's a written agreement somewhere that anytime you bring this fragrance up, you have to mention the kofi note. I, I think that's a thing. Good luck ever finding anything where somebody reviews this and doesn't mention it. Unless it's like a one or two sentence review where they go, this smells really good. I like that I bought it. Does give an interesting flair to the fragrance though. This one is sweet, mildly spicy, warm, and with a, a nice soft woodsy base that everything rests on. Noir Extreme, one of the best fragrances Tom Ford has put out for men that's not in their private blend line. It's a great combination of mass appeal with good versatility in cooler weather with a unique kind of flavor to it. Noir Extreme, great stuff, wrapping up this list of heavy hitters. All right, guys, that is going to do it for me. I'm going to go ahead and take off. Thank you for hanging with me and listening to me talk about some fragrances that boost up my confidence. Hit me up in the comments with some of the fragrances that you guys wear to boost you up, make you feel good. Thank you for hanging with me. Thanks for your support. Stay safe out there, and I'll see you tomorrow with another fragrance video. See you guys later.